I thank you, Mr. President. I come this morning to talk about the impending passage of a very failed health care bill in the House of Representatives and to remind my colleagues that this legislation moving through the House of Representatives is the first time in the 50 plus year of the Medicaid program that they are going to pass legislation to cap and cost shift Medicaid costs to states. This is a 300, I'm sorry, an $839 billion cost shift from the federal government to states, a one quarter cut to the federal Medicaid investment, 14 million Americans will lose Medicaid coverage, and the draconian arbitrary budget caps will leave states with impossible choices to cut people from care, cut provider reimbursements, or reduce benefits. Overall, 24 million Americans will lose their health insurance. That is according to a recent Congressional Budget Office analysis. Why do I say this is a broken promise? Because it was very clear that uh, President Trump, when he was a candidate, said that he was not going to cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. Why is that important? because these are trusted programs that have worked cost effectively for so many Americans and giving them access to care. Now is not the time, as we have seen a Medicaid expansion, to now cost shift to the states by breaking this promise and putting in it, for the first time in 50 years, a substantial change to the way Medicaid works. It does represent, in my opinion, a war on Medicaid, one that we cannot afford to wage. Medicaid has allowed communities that have expanded through the Affordable Care Act, the Medicaid coverage, to increase the value in the community of a healthy population. All you have to do is talk to healthcare providers, hospitals, chambers of commerce, others to get them to say that yes, having more people with healthcare coverage in our community has helped us in raising the standard of living. Why is that? Well, first of all, uncompensated care is no longer put at the hospital's doorstep. Secondly, the population with health care coverage is healthier, getting treatment in advance as opposed to waiting to a crisis. And it represents an investment in the community that allows the community to stabilize. These are important issues for us to discuss. I hope my colleagues in the Senate won't fall for this ploy, or they won't uh, go back on promises that had been made by this administration not to cut Medicaid. There are other aspects of the bill coming over from the House of Representatives, obviously dealing with pre-existing conditions. And we know from our own experience in the state of Washington that high-risk pools cover only a tiny portion of people with pre-existing conditions are inadequate unless properly funded. So. I think the dozens of patients from our state uh, which uh, know that, quote, premiums that can top $20,000 a year, patients don't exactly clamor to join these high-risk pools, and a public insurer of last resort for patients with cancer, AIDS, and other serious disease as they might be, the premiums cover only about 30% of the patient's medical and prescription expenses, end quote. That's in an article from the Seattle Times 2009 entitled Dozens of Patients Cut from State's High-Risk Insurance Pool. So there are many things that are working in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we have done great things on rebalancing, that is to rebalance people from community-based, from nursing home care to community-based care. Maybe we can get that chart. That shows how many states in the United States of America are doing this. This is in the Affordable Care Act. We wrote a provision encouraging states to try to rebalance their population, not encouraging so much uh, nursing home care because it's so expensive, and instead trying to deliver the long-term care that people need in their individual communities. The great success of this is that many states in the Affordable Care Act took us up on it. States like Nevada, Iowa, Missouri, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Maine. So I saw in our own state over a 15-year period of time, we saved roughly $2 billion. 
That is $2 billion of cost that instead of paying for a Medicaid population in expensive nursing home settings, we instead innovated and put them into what was a cost-effective delivery system in which people love to stay in their home as they age as opposed to the notion of expensive nursing home care. I mention that because that $2 billion could be the kinds of savings that we would see in these states. So I tell my colleagues from the House, innovate, don't capitate, don't try to say that you have an ingenious idea on how to take care of health care costs by simply capitating for the first time in 50 plus years the Medicaid program and then leaving the states to pick up the bill. It won't work. Follow the ideas and strategies that are much better in helping us cut costs for an aging population that is living longer and look for fixes that are already there in the Affordable Care Act to do so. I thank the President and I yield the floor.